Welcome to Excel 2010 statistics video number 72. Hey, if you want to download the Sortbook Business 210 Chapter 7, click on the link below the video. Hey, uh, we're going to switch gears here. We've been talking in Chapter 7 about mu for the population and then the sampling distribution of x bar. Here, we, in this video, we want to talk about proportions and the sampling distribution of p bar. Now let's go over to our PDFs. A proportion. We actually saw this before in our Chapter 5 binomial uh, experiments where we went out and asked a question, right? Did you get stuck in traffic? Yes or no? Uh, did you, do you balance your checkbook? Yes or no? So in this video, we want to talk about the sampling distribution of p bar. Just like sampling distribution for x bar, we have some population distribution, and then we have a distribution of a sample statistic. Our sample statistics here is going to be p bar. Now p bar is x divided by n. That's just how many, if we go out and ask how many people balance their checkbook, and there's a sample size, we can figure out the proportion for our sample. Sample proportion, and that will be our random variable, right? Because if we're plotting all of them, then whatever sample statistics we get, in this case p bar, is a random variable. All right, there is an important test. And most of what we've already learned about sampling distribution of x bar will apply for p bar. You know, if we go out and plot them all, uh, we're going to have less dispersion, right? Also, our expected value p bar is going to be equal to our population proportion. Just like back with sampling distribution of x bar, mu was equal to x bar. There is one test we're going to have to run. Um, so the sampling distribution of p bar can be approximated with the normal distribution if these two tests are met. Sample size times population proportion if it's greater than or equal to 5, and sample size times the complement of the population proportion. If that's greater than or equal to 5, both of those come out true, then ding, ding, ding. We can use the normal distribution. All right, so expected value p bar is equal to population proportion. Now, standard deviation, standard deviation of p bar. Here's going to be our base formula. We're going to take population proportion times the complement of it, divided by n, and then the square root. That'll give us uh, standard deviation sub p bar or our standard error. You can use the term standard error for the, the uh, standard deviation of a sample statistic sampling distribution. And we're going to have this correction factor here, right? Just like we saw in the last video, last couple of videos, when our uh, sample size divided by the population size is less than or equal to 5, then we can ignore this. All right, let's go over to. There's an example here. But let's go, and we're going to use our norm uh, dot dist functions just like we've been using. Let's go over to Excel. We have a checkbook example here. So population proportion P, that's a proportion of Americans that balance their checkbooks is 0.56. Maybe someone makes a claim, and we're going to go out and test it. If the population in the United States is 300 million, and we take a sample of 400 Americans, answer the following questions. All right, so balancing our checkbook. Went out. Uh, somebody makes a claim like this, so we want to test it. So we, we go out and do a sample of 400. And we want to find, just like in the last couple of videos, the probability between some upper and lower that our uh, sample mean could lie within this uh, interval. But let's first calculate the complement, because we're going to have to use that in our formula. When we look over here, we're going to have to use the complement a few times, right? So I'm just going to calculate it right off the bat, equals 1 minus this. All it means is the proportion of people in the population that balance their checkbook, 0.56, not balanced checkbook, 0.44. There's our big N, our little n. Let's test. Now this one you can <laughs> look at, right? But we'll test it <clears throat> just to see whether we have to use a correction factor, right? Sample size divided by population. Very, very small. That's true. So we don't have to use our correction factor. Now our standard error. <coughs> I think I have a standard error stuck in my throat. Uh, our standard error, since we don't have to use the 
correction factor is simply the square root. And we take p times complement of p divided by sample size. All right, and that's sigma sub p bar. Now, we have to ask the question, can we use normal? So we're going to do sample size times po uh, population proportion, then sample size times the complement. If they're both greater than 5, then we can use our normal distribution. So I'm going to take the uh, population proportion times n. That one's true, way bigger than 5, equals the complement times n. So they're both much greater than 5. No problem. We can use the normal distribution. Now, we have to calculate our expected p bar. Remember, we need the uh, p bar for our sampling distribution of p bars, the average, the typical value for that. Oh, yeah, that's just this right here. Right. All right, just like for when we were studying x bar for p bar, it's the same. Expected value of p bar is going to equal to the proportion p, or the uh, population statistic here is going to be our exactly the same for our sampling distribution here. Now, in order to calculate probability here between some upper and lower, we need to figure out what the upper and lower is. So our question is, what is the probability that the sample proportion will be within plus or minus 0 0.02 of the population proportion? So we'll calculate an upper and a lower. Here will be our lower. And I'm going to lock this one, because I'm going to copy this formula down. Okay, So that's the lower. And then we'll do this again. Oh, yeah, the uh, expected p bar. I'm going to hit F4 plus our margin of error. So that's on the upper end. So now I can copy those formulas down. And then so for here, we got a little bigger spread, right? Because our margin of error is going to be 0 0.04. Right now, just as for x bar, we can use our norm.dist. We have an upper and a lower. We have our p bar. And we have our standard error. That's the standard deviation for our distribution of p bar. So when we come down here, norm.dist, hey, it says x. So now we know in chapter 6 we could use x. In chapter 7, we can use x bar or p bar. All right, I'm going to take always the upper first, right? Comma, the mean. F4, comma, standard deviation, that's our standard error, F4, comma, and then cumulative. Now, this gives us all the area up to uh, the high end. So we need to subtract from it all the area on the low end. Not x, p bar, mean, F4, comma, standard deviation, no problem. That's our standard error. Got to pick the right standard deviation for the right distribution. Since we're using our sampling distribution, we use our standard error. F4, comma, 1. All right, I want to copy this down. Okay. So now we ask the question, what's the probability that the sample proportion lie within that margin of error? There it is, 57 and 89. So the probability that the sample proportion will be within 0 0.02 of the population proportion is 57. So if we go out, given our sample size was uh, 400, we're 89% sure that if we go out and take a sample, it'll lie between these two values. So if we go out and get a take a sample, and it's below 0.52, so it comes out to be 0.5, so 50% of Americans balance their checkbook, right? That means we're pretty sure, 90% sure it's between here. So if it's outside here, 0.5, then we maybe go back and say, well, this doesn't seem so reasonable. All right, uh, so in this video, we saw p bar and the sampling distribution of p bar. And that is our last video for chapter 7. So. Uh, do that homework, do all the video project examples, and we'll see you next chapter.